shape you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's certainly a blessing to be in the presence of God once more, in spite of the, the tragedy and the difficult things happen daily. So let us put our trust and hold on to his unchanging hand. Let us go to God in prayer. Most righteous, eternal, glory, glorious Father, as we come before you, dear Lord, giving you thanks. Thank you for life. Thank you for everything you have blessed us with, dear Lord. Lord, we acknowledge you that without you we are nothing, dear Lord. We are nothing but trying to serve you as your son Jesus Christ did, dear Lord. Lord, we ask that you search our heart, dear Lord. Search it and lead us to the path of righteousness, dear Lord. Lord, help us to please you and not please men, dear Lord, because it is better to, to be obedient to you than man, dear Lord. Father, as we go in our Bible class, dear Lord, we ask that we search your word, dear Lord, and divide it and to see what is right, dear Lord, because your word is life, dear Lord. And without your word, dear Lord, and your mastering to life, dear Lord, we have nothing, dear Lord. Lord, it is for correction, for reproof, and for teaching, dear Lord. Let us take heed to your word, dear Lord. Let us be wise, dear Lord. Lord, we give you the praise, the glory, and honor, and we worship your name, and we magnify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother CJ. And good evening, everyone. Uh, as Brother CJ said, it's good for us to be in the house and the presence of God once again. And as Sister Sharon said, uh, where two or more is gathered, uh, as long as God is there, then we're good. All right, we're not looking at the numbers. Uh, we're looking at uh, God. All right. Uh, thank you for being here on tonight. You could have been elsewhere, uh, but you chose to sit down and study. And I think that is important when it comes on to the people of God. If we, if we say we're children of God, then we will spend time in studying the word of God. Because as CJ said, it is the word of God that will judge us in the last day. All right? So on our uh, slide, it's, it's there. All right? Uh, we're still in the book of 1 Peter chapter 3. And today we're going to start with verse number 18. Uh, Brother CJ, keep your mic. Oh, I should have told you. Keep your mic. So that's first, first Peter chapter 3 and verse number 18. It says, For Christ also suffered once for our sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. Here is a portion of God's word. We honor it by saying, Amen. So last week, uh, we kind of intertwined uh, how we should be as people of God uh, through suffering uh, like Christ. That, that, that is, when we are uh, dealing with each other, uh, we should remember that we should not fight uh, each other, we should be actually giving a blessing, and even if we suffer, uh, as we would said, for righteousness sake, then we are blessed. You don't remember? Yes, we are blessed, alright? So, we, we don't worry. So, it says, suffering like Christ. This passage started out with just that. It says, for Christ suffered for sins all all of our sins christ suffered all right i want to title this part of our our lesson through his godly suffering 
Uh, Jesus, hold on one second. So through Jesus' godly suffering, he brought us to God. All right? Uh, so we had said when we suffer, let us suffer not as busy bodies or murderers or thief or anything that is evil. And as David said, we should keep our hands and our ears and our, and our whole bodies from doing what? From doing evil. So Christ suffered once for sins. Jesus suffered once and brought us to God. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 14 to 18. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14 uh, to 18. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much. All right, so here we're seeing, the, ju just as the first Peter passage says, that there is no longer a sacrifice from us for sins. And again, under the Old Testament, under the Old Law, every year what they had to do, when it comes down to their sins, what they had to do? They had to offer sacrifices, but what did offering the sacrifice do? Did, did the sacrifice actually cleanse them from, for their sins? It, it, it just brought it forward. And they keep bringing it forward. But here the passage is saying, for Christ himself brought peace to us. This is through his atonement for our sins. And in other words, there's nothing else we can pay even today for our sins. There's nothing else we can pay. And that is why even the, the, the apostle Paul says that when we sin willfully, what we're doing is putting Christ back to a open shame. We're crucifying him again a second time. Right? In Hebrews, we're going to jump to Hebrews. That's probably a passage that we, we should have gone to first. Hebrews. Uh, who has that mic? Uh, brother, brother, jump here. Hebrews chapter number 9, from verse number 1. Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 1. Then verily, the first covenant had also ordinances of divine services, service, and worldly sanctuary. Yeah, continue. For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick, mm -hmm. and the table, and the, sh and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid around about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that, w that budded, and the tables of the covenant, and over the ch cherubims, cherubims of glory shadowing the what verse are you bro verse 5 Mer okay I have a different mercy verse okay. go ahead cherubim mm -hmm. mercy seed of which we cannot know we cannot now speak particularly alright stop, stop, stop there alright so what, what chapter number 9 is doing 
And what Hebrews book itself is all about is speaking to one the authority of Jesus himself. He spoke of the law, that is the old law, and then it's going to ties in how Jesus himself with the new law is better than the old law. So here it is speaking about the earthly things of the old law or the sanctuary. So it spoke of Aaron's body rod, right? It, 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 it spoke of the lampstand, the table, the showbread. It, it spoke of the, the, the vigil. It spoke of all these what? Physical, earthly things, right? I want somebody else to read. Uh, brother CJ, uh, find Brother Hyatt. Brother Hyatt, uh, verse number six. Well, we're all going to read through this tonight, so prepare yourself from now uh, to be a part of the reading crew. Uh, so verse number six, Hebrews prepare chapter nine. Now, uh, to be a part of the reading crew. Uh, so verse number six, Hebrews uh, chapter nine. No. Good, uh, good night, I, everyone. I, I, I'm here myself. Good night, everyone. Verse 6. Uh, so verse number 6. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 9. No. What's good, uh, good night, I, I, everyone. I, I'm here myself. Good night, everyone. Verse 6. Uh, so verse number 6. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 9. No. What's good, uh, good night, I, I, everyone. I, I, I'm here myself. Good night, everyone. Go ahead, brother. No, when these things had been. Now, when these things had been thus prepared, mm -hmm. the priests always went in into the first part of the tabernacle, performing the services. Mm -hmm. All right, so again, but, follow and envision what is taking place. As we said before, the things I spoke about from verse number one to verse number five is speaking about the earthly things of the sanctuary. All right, so here it's talking about now when these things have thus been prepared, it's going to show us now. So envision as you read along. Mm -hmm. But, but into the second part, the high priest went al went alone once a once a year, mm -hmm. not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the people sinned sins committed in ignorance. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit indicating this that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was still standing mm -hmm. it was symbolic for the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices are are offered which cannot be made which cannot which cannot make him who perform the services perfect mm -hmm. in regard to the conscience mm -hmm. concerned only with foods and drinks various washing washings and the fleshy ordinances mm -hmm. imposed until the time of reformation all right stop there so brother Yannick, next reader all right so here it's speaking about now listen as i said to follow what he says it's saying in the the first that the, the priest went into where when did these things had been prepared, the priest went into the first part of the tabernacle, verse number six, right? But into the second part of the tabernacle, who went there? The high priest. And he says that the high priest had to bring what with him when he goes in there? He had to bring blood. What did he do with the blood? It's, he sprinkled and offered sacrifice for his sin not the people you know so before he had to deal with the, the sins of the people he had to do what take care of himself right even though he's called the high priest and he's the one that's going to offer the sacrifice on behalf of what everybody all right keep we're, we're painting a picture here so we're, we're looking at first peter chapter 3 and verse number 80 that says jesus did what Offer himself once for all for sins. Right? And we are looking at how uh, important this is. Verse number 11. Brother Yannick, verse number 11. Of... But Christ came as high priest mm -hmm. of the good things to come mm -hmm. 
with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, mm -hmm. not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, mm -hmm. not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, mm -hmm. he entered the most holy place once and for all, mm -hmm. having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse our conscience from dead works mm -hmm. to serve the living God. And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, mm -hmm. that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. All right, stop there. All right, so who can explain to me what is going on here from verse number 11? Who can explain to me? Ready, Anik, you want to start first? See that you have, you have the mic there. From verse number 11 to 15. So we spoke about the priests and what the priests had to do. Huh? We did, right? And now Jesus is speaking about Jesus. What he's saying that Jesus, if the, if the blood of goats did something, but it couldn't do much. What did it say about Jesus? What did it say after that? Hmm? How much more greater is the blood of whom? Christ, who the Bible says he, he had no spots, he had nothing wrong with him. Right? He had, he had, he, remember, you know, again, preacher, under the old, old law, they had to offer what type of sacrifice? It, it can't be lame. It, can, it, it must be spotless. Uh, yeah, firstborn. Right? You, you say a year old? Yes. Uh, it, these things had to be perfect. You following me? All right? So G, it's saying that Jesus now, Jesus' blood, no longer can the, the, the bulls and the goats and the calves, no longer these bloods can what? Cleanse our sins. All right. Uh, who else? Who else want to read? Sister Fern, you want to read for us verse number sixteen? Oh. Oh. For where there is mm -hmm. testament, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. All right. Stop there. Did we read that? Did we all read that passage there? Yes. You read that? What does that mean? What does that mean? For where there is a testament, there must also be a the death of the testator. What does that mean? When it says a testator, what does that mean? Like somebody who make a will. Huh? It is a person who makes a way. Someone who makes a, a way. As I said last week, Jesus is the one that created the bridge between us and God. Yes. Right? We are sin affected. Mm -hmm. We can't have a relationship with God unless we get rid of what? Sin. Sins. So here comes now the sacrifice that can bridge that gap. Which is Jesus. So where there is a testament, there must be a the testator. testator. Yes, a testator. Right? The death of the testator too. Yes. Right? So in other words, the perfect thing that will come and bridge the gap, it must what? Die. Be sacrificed. All right? Verse number 17. For a testament is in force after men are dead. Mm -hmm. since, it, since it has no power at all while the testator lives. Mm -hmm. Therefore, not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood. 
For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water, scarlet wool, and hyssop, mm -hmm. and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you. Then likewise he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission. All right. So think again about the Bible passage that says, you know, that says, while we were yet still sinners, sinners what did Christ do? Christ died. Christ died. died. For who? The ungodly. The ungodly. That is saying that we were supposed to be put in the place of Jesus. Yeah. In the first place. Hello? Yeah. And Jesus being the perfect testator was the one that bridged that gap. Right? I, I love the book of Hebrews because it, it just paints it so perfectly that you don't have to guess. You see, very, very clear. So it is not only saying that there must be death and must be blood, but it's telling you, it's pointing you to back to who? Moses. It's showing you that they had to do this while they were doing what? Anything that has to do with sin. Yeah. Even when they wanted to worship God, they had to purify themselves before they go ahead to do that. All right, Sister Sharon, verse number 23. 23. Yes. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these. Mm -hmm. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. Mm -hmm. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true. And so on funny. But into heaven itself. Mm -hmm. Now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood of others. All right, stop, just stop here for a second. So here you see what he's saying to us? That Jesus is doing these things how much time? One. One time. The priest had to do it? Every year. Every year. There's no time at all that he can say, all right, I'm not to do it. Right? We, we, what, what are the sacrifices do, do we offer today? Hmm? Sister Cassandra? Our bodies? As a living sacrifice? And, yeah, Sister Fern? We offer the sacrifice of praise. We have a sacrifice of praise. Anybody else? What type of sacrifice do we offer? So we're not offering the, the, the blood of goats or rams or dove, dove, none of those things. Because Christ did it once for all. But we have to sacrifice some things. What are those? So a couple of persons went already. Hmm? Yourself? I want us to be more detailed with our answer. Be specific. What, what, what do we offer? Again, we're, we're, we're looking at, yes, Sister, sister uh, Ferran, we're looking at how the, 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 the Hebrews passage in verse uh, chapter number 10. It is painting to us that it had to be something perfect. Right? So when we give God anything, anything at all we give to God, it must be? It must be what? Perfect. So if we're giving our time, we must do it wholeheartedly. Don't make it seem like, say, boy, somebody has forced you to do it. Right? Because the, the Bible says that every, anything that you do, do it to God. Right? So that is your reasonable service. Since, since God already put his son in front of your place, in other words, Paul is saying the least you can do is to love God. And give him your best. Right? So that anytime we come into the presence of God, I, I know sometimes it, it, it kind of it, it gets not only monotonous, but we, it, we, we're outside we're good, we talk, but we'll come inside, it's like we feel burdened. 
I, 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 am I talking to somebody? Huh? I have been there myself. What all to their friends? We, 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 we rule with them good. And then make you? Eh? Hello? Who made you? Who made us? God made us. And even though we love football, and I love my football. I, I, you know, I, went, I, went, I remember after speaking to Sister Sharon, and, and when we spoke to Sister Sharon about the, the rental thing, was it Monday? Monday. And I went over to Grinnell and we were talking. And during the conversation, I had my phone like this. Sister Grinnell was on, on the phone, where the Michael was sorting out his, his schedule, and I was watching by football. And she said, Boy, you want one of them football fanatics there too? Una I get pay? <laughs> right? That is how much we love football. Like anywhere we are, we just want, we want to see what is going on with our team. But can't it be the same way with God? Amen, brother. Amen. Can't it, shouldn't it be the same way? Yes, better. 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 Even, uh, 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 thank you for correcting me. It, shouldn't it be better? Amen. Because sometimes we give even, even more attention to the, to the device to the device than the one who gave us the brain to make it in the first place. So instead of us glorifying God, we glorify the things that God gives us. So nothing is wrong with talking to our friends, you know. But ensure that when you're coming into the presence of God, you're giving your utmost best. So that is why the Bible says that if you realize that you or your brother, which one of there is a problem, go and fix it before you come to me. That's so important. God, God, God wants your undivided attention. He wants us to give it. So we, we yes, yes. Okay. I want, I want, okay. <laughs> Yes. The world, the world don't mind us all. The world don't mind when we are fanatics about things of things the world. Things of the world. A matter of fact, a matter of fact, the world cheer us on. Oh, yes. she's so committed to her job. <laughs> she's so devoted. And when you when you are devoted to God, Lord, you extra eat. Yes. Oh, you're so self righteous. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what concerns me even more is that sometimes as Christians we can Sometimes as Christians, we will listen, give ear to that. And then we start adjusting our commitment to God so we don't look like fanatics. Yes, yes. Because fanatic, yes. To, uh, fanatic by itself, standing, yes. is not something nice. Yes. But if you're a fanatic for God, mm -hmm. different things, certain mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. everything has its time and place. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because I believe that you must be a good worker too. Yes. Yes. You know? Yes. I mean, you're not going to be perfect, mm -hmm. but you strive to do well on the job. Yes. I don't subscribe to doing anything at work and mm -hmm. come and, you understand? So mm -hmm. you, tr you try to do well in all mm -hmm. spheres of life, but sometimes... When we when we are fanatics for God, or we try to be committed, we are given a, a flogging yes. and by uh, the world, and we, sometimes we become afraid, and then we start fitting. We mean we're working on this project. We mean you have to go to church. Stay and finish it, man. <laughs> Nobody now go kill you. Yes. And these same people, you know, they ain't gonna leave work to go not about God. Mm -mm. And so I think as Christians. Our priority mm -hmm. needs to be about God because when all that is said and done, work is, if anything is wrong with you, work is going to find somebody to replace yep. you. I've, I've read so many stories mm -hmm. of people who are committed to their job for how many years and even sometimes they get sick and sometimes the workplace don't even care. After a certain time, they want to push them out. Some, mm -hmm. They want to push them out without even compensating them properly. Mm -hmm. So God truly is the faithful one to the end. Yes. And so our loyalty should be to God. Because when all that is said and done, mm -hmm. he's going to be the only one. And I mean the only yes. one. Yes, yes. 
the only one yes. mm -hmm. who is going to be committed to us mm -hmm. to the end. Yes. Uh, that is so true. Right, so in essence of what Sister Cassandra was saying, if, if you did not hear the first part, what she said that sometimes when we are uh, fanatics for God, and uh, maybe we want to leave our jobs uh, quickly, you know, like Sister Sharon would be like, hey, am I Bible class time? You know, me luck, me, me God. Right? They will do what? Chastise you for doing that? Oh, you so go like say, you so Christian, what are anybody else? Are you so holy? Huh? When you try to do the things to please whom? God. But at the same time, if you try, if you try to do the things that the world is involved with, it is good, it's cool. Isn't it? If you don't work and go party, them not sit on though. They're not, they're not going to say anything. Remember, you know, Jesus already said, you know, that if the world hates you, take heart because they hate who first? Him first. Why did, why did they hate him? Hmm? Jesus came into the world to bring light. And he himself said that those who are living in darkness... They do what? They hate light. They don't like it. So anytime at all, not, not is the devil either. Remember that those who are in the world is the devil has control over them already. So they're not going to encourage you to do the things that are right. But anytime you slip up, they're going to point out, aren't you a Christian? Right? So remember that you are the light of the world and people don't want you to show them up. So if you decide you want to prioritize, you want to put the things of God first, they're going to chastise you. Whether it is your boss or, or, or your co-workers, right? They're going to do what? Chastise you. They're not going to say, good, good job. And sometimes we're, we're, we're looking for that, you know, we're looking for the good job. But remember the Bible says, don't grow weary while doing good. You do good, continue to do good. All right? So, on the same topic, anybody has anything else to say? So, for those who came in late, we're, we're linking uh, First Peter chapter 3, verse number 18. And we're now in the book of Hebrews. We read from verse number one. And we are, Sister Sharon, are you verse 19? It was you. <laughs> no, it was you. All right, so, so, uh, uh, so we're reading from first, it's not first Peter, sorry. Hebrews chapter nine. And are, are, are you verse 20? Oh, were we so far? Okay, so verse 24, sorry. All right, so. Sure. Sure. Uh, go, go, go ahead, Sister Winston. Right. For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands. Yes. Which are copies of the true. Mm -hmm. But into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for mm -hmm. us. Not that he would offer himself often, as the high priest offers the most holy place, mm -hmm. enters, sorry, the most holy place every year with blood of another. He then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. Mm. But now, once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away the sin by this, put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Mm -hmm. And as it is appointed to men once to die, after that comes the judgment. Mm -hmm. Christ was of, so Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time, apart from sin, for salvation. All right, so this is in essence of what we have been speaking about in First Peter chapter 3. Uh, I can say from verse 8 to where we are now in verse number 18. All right, so Peter is telling us, continue to do good even while we are suffering. All right? 
So he said, even when people are reviled against you, what you do, what you do? Do, do good. When people are evil to you, what you do, do? Do good and send them a blessing. All right? You know, so it, 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 it is so, so much of the human part of us that when somebody do bad to us, we want to just, it just click. Boy, God does touch it. Isn't it? <laughs> Isn't it, Sharon? The people that they are, they get problem. You just want God for us. Fine, are we? Fine, God, fine, are we? You know, you know what to do. You don't have to tell you what to do. But the Bible said that we should continue to do. Continue to do what? Do good. But then now it come to us, you know, because it's telling us. Remember, David told us first from the quotation from Psalm chapter 32. David said that if you want to see good days, and this good days is in the eyes of God, because we spoke about the conscience already. If you want to see good days with God, what should you do? Stay away from sin. He said, keep your lips from speaking evil and deceit. And then we went back to see the origin of that passage that he had the opportunity to do solve some danger. Huh? And what did he do? He took the opportunity after he realized that Saul was the one that was running after him to kill him. He could have easily said, boy, I defend myself. But what did he say? Did not touch the Lord's anointed. Then now, he say, he went on to say, even when you are doing good and people, whether in the world or around us, are doing what? They're speaking evil against us. The same good that we're doing, you know. Remember, he said, you know, when they defame you as evildoers, what should we do? Revile not. Your good conduct in Christ may put them to an open shame. Then now he goes to say now in verse number 28 of Hebrews chapter 9, he says, So Christ was offered how much time again? Once to bear the sins of many to those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for, for what? Salvation. So this is the reason why we're keeping ourselves from doing evil. Because we want salvation to become ours. We want to get something good at the end of the day. Hello? Uh, Hebrews chapter 7 now. Come to Hebrews chapter 7. We're going to read from verse number 21. Hebrews chapter 7. Who has the mic? Uh, Sister Lavine. You don't have the mic, but I'm giving you the mic. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 21. They're going to go to 28. Hebrews chapter 7, 7. Yeah, 21. Yes. For those priests were made without an oath, mm -hmm. but this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. All right, stop there. Again, we, we, we looked at chapter number 9, and we saw where the Bible spoke of the priests. It spoke of the physical priests, what they had to do, the, 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 the earthly things that they had to use. Now we go to chapter number 7, and it's speaking about who? Melchizedek. Right? And he's saying that Christ is like Melchizedek. Meaning that he is from, he's got an order from where? Heaven. How you, be, how you became a, 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 a Levitic, Levitical priest? How you become that in, in the scripture? How you become that? Huh? Being part of the 
the lineage of the Levites. Those are who become priests. But he said that Jesus is not like that. Right? Where Jesus came from? Huh? What type of, what, what type of lineage Jesus came from? Huh? Judah? Right? So he's, he's in no way tied to the Levitical priesthood. Right? Continue this. They were not suffered to continue by reason of death. Mm -hmm. But this man, because he continued ever at an unchangeable priesthood, mm -hmm. wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, mm -hmm. seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, mm -hmm. who needed not daily, as those high priests, to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins, and then for the people's. For this he did once, when he offered up himself. For the law maketh men high priests, which have infirmity, but the word of the oath, which was since the law, make it the son who is consecrated forevermore. All right. So we're, we're, we're seeing the, the authority of whom now? Jesus as the greatest priest ever on this earth. Right? We're seeing what that he has somewhat. He has some power. But he says that the, 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 the law appointed him what? Son or ruler over everything. We see that there? Hmm? Hebrew, all right, uh, let's jump out of Hebrews now. We're going to go to Romans chapter 5. Should we? All right, before we go to Romans chapter 5, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, 18 to 25. Somebody else, who did not read it? Who have not read Sister Paula, I see you looking at Sister Paula. Brother Yanni, to this. Brother, brother, brother Glasswell, when Brother Yanni come back this side. Uh, First Peter chapter 2, 18 to 25. First Peter 2? Yeah, First Peter chapter 2, 18 to 25. Okay. Servants, be subject to your masters mm -hmm. with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the, for, the, the forward. For this is thankworthy mm -hmm. if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. All right, so, 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 so all of us are following? We're not following? You don't know where we are? First Peter chapter 2. Verse 18 to 25. All right, so it says, it says in, in, in verse 19 that you just read, Brother Glasspool. Read that one first again. For this is thankworthy mm -hmm. if a man for a conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. All right, so again, what did Christ do? What did Christ do to suffer death? All right, so all we're doing is tying the things in 1 Peter chapter 3, all right? So we're looking from verse number 80, but we're looking from the, the verses before. It says that sometimes we will suffer as good people. Good things will happen to? Bad things will happen to? Good people. Good people right? And when bad things happen to good people, the encouragement here is saying it is commendable if someone bears under the pressure of being unjustly done, it is saying that it is commendable because God is there with you. Okay. Hello? Yes. So you should have a, a, a positive outlook that you're doing it to God, even though we're living in the physical world. It is difficult. Right? But what the, as, as Paul said, we are beating our bodies into subjection so we can be pleasing to God. All right. So uh, as we're going, we're learning. Continue, bro. Verse 20. For what glory is it mm -hmm. if when we buffeted 
for your faults. Mm -hmm. Ye shall take it patiently. But if when we if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently. This is acceptable with God. All right. So the, so the, so, the, so the scripture is saying to us, but how is it that your credit, right? If you receive a beating for doing what? Wrong. So you're getting beaten because you do what? Wrong. Is, is there any credit that you just take it? Huh? Are, are, are you with me? Are, we're not there? Verse, verse number 20. 20. You're answering? Mm -mm -mm. See, can't hear them. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Can't hear them. <laughs> Silence. All right, verse number 20. It's saying that what credit is there if you're doing wrong and you get beaten for it? You deserve it. Hello? In other words, you, 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 you have to take it. You deserve it. So there's no real credit because you, you, you have done the work to receive what you're getting paid for. You know, children don't get beaten again. I, I saw on the, on the, um, in, the, in the star this morning. I was the star of the cleaner. I don't remember which one. And they said that, you know, the, 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 the church should help with disciplining the young people. And I saw one of the first comments was like, the pay, it starts at home first. Back in the day, parents used to be able to strike or discipline their children. The school was able as well to be a disciplinarian as well. Yes. Don't it? Yes. Hello? Uh, so it's, uh, the older folks, <laughs> talk to the younger folks, the older ones, especially the principal. Yeah, yeah, when they said, Oh, me a hand, it's because they do something now. Yes, if I know you are somebody else, <laughs> so everybody go, everybody go receive it. Something was done wrong, so they get beaten, right. don't it? Right, right. So if you are taking those licks. You're not going to be any champion because what? Something was done wrong and you're getting it. And, 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 and so they're saying that the, the, the church should take up a greater responsibility. But well, I'm glad that somebody said it start first in the home. Alright? You, you, you agree with me? Yes. So the, here Peter is saying to us, you know, there is no real credit if you're getting punished for doing something wrong. Right? Continue. It says that if I do something wrong, it says, but if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. And that is the important part that when it is, it is, it is commendable before God because we might not get the, the commendation in this world. Some things that we go through, nobody not going to say, boy, sister, brother, good job. You fight. But we should always remember that God is there. Right there at all times. There's no, God don't turn his back on us, you know. And that is why uh, David is saying that we should keep our whole body out of doing the things that are evil. Because when we are suffering for doing good, as children, sometimes we get beaten. Sometimes your, your, your older siblings or somebody else might blame something on you. And you get beaten for it. But they're vexed now. Your blood does a boil. They say, what am I get beaten for? In this life, don't be vexed. If things are happening to you and you, you, you feel like you don't deserve it. Because the Bible already told us that God is the great rewarder. That will give us what we truly deserve. And remember, you know, Lazarus got some things the Bible said. Lazarus got his share while he was on this earth. He got a bad things happening to him. Not true. Yeah. A lot of unfortunate situations came upon Lazarus. But he took it. He did not curse. And just as Job did, he did not sin. Just as we should do, we should not curse or sin. 
when we are suffering unjustly. Because it is, it is God we are doing anything for, we are doing it for God. He is, he is the one that can really give us what we truly deserve, right? All right so continue verse number 21. Brother Gospel. 21. Yes. For to this you are called. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ had suffered for us, leaving us an, an example that ye should follow his steps. Mm-hmm. Continue. Who did not sin? Neither was guile found in his mouth. Mm. Who, mm -hmm. who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. Mm -hmm. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judged righteously. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so he, he, what is the example that we're seeing here that Christ did? All of, all of this is taken into consideration, again, in our passage. What did our passage say in verse number 18 of 1 Peter chapter 3? Hmm? 1 Peter chapter <laughs> uh, Somebody skip, skip, the, skip the, the, the slide for me, please. <laughs> skip the slide. Uh, brother, bro, jump here. All right, so what, what, what is the example? Uh, yes, what is the example? Hmm? Verse, number, verse number 18. For Christ also did what? Suffered for sins. Suffered? How much time? Once for sins. The what? The just for the? Unjust. Are the just that he might bring us to God? Being the what? We, we, we spoke about this in, in Hebrews. Did what? Today. He had to die. So the testator, which is the perfect. Perfect what? Atonement for sin? Yes. Had to? Die. Right. In the flesh. But made alive by? The spirit. The spirit. Alright? So sister, sister Sharon and sister <laughs> and sister Ferran, you guys are going to get uh, deducted marks. <laughs> Alright? So Christ suffered without what? Doing anything wrong. He suffered for the just and the unjust. He was the, the one who was perfect. He was the just. He suffered for the, well, he suffered for everybody. Right? Because there, there, there are some good men that died too. There are some good women that died too. Right? So he suffered for everybody. He did nothing wrong. But the passage is saying that Jesus, he committed no sin, neither no deceit was found in his mouth. Where did where, where this quotation came from? Hmm? Where, where, did, where, 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 where did that quotation came from? Are you 59, 53? All right, we're gonna see sister, sister, sister. Uh, Lavin said fifty-three. Isaiah fifty-three. Somebody said Isaiah fifty-nine. Who was right? <laughs> it is Isaiah fifty-three, right? It says in verse number four, surely. He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did what? Esteem him stricken, smitten by God. And what? And what? Afflicted. But he was what? Wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for? Our peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed. And all we like sheep have did what? We have done what? Gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of 
us all. So you see, it's key, it keeps saying all of us. But Christ himself did nothing. Hmm? Christ himself was the, 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 the pure bridge that bridged the gap between us and God. Without him, we, we, we couldn't have uh, had a relationship with God. Uh, continue in your, in your passage, Brother uh, Glasgow. Verse number, what is that, 23? Uh, you, want, you want us to read? Uh, go ahead. Yes, I, I didn't want to get away with it, you know. I, I, yes, he, he opened that his mouth. Yes, that's it, that is true. Yes, that is where we are. That's true. That's where we are. So he, 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 he what? He what? Verse number, where we are in 1 Peter chapter 2. Verse, verse, are we verse 24? 24, yes. All right, 24. Who is his own self, bear our sins in mm -hmm. his own body, on the tree that, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by mm -hmm. whose stripes ye were healed. Mm -hmm. For ye were as sheep going as astray, mm -hmm. but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of our souls. So, so you see how important Jesus is? We have, we have read Hebrews chapter 8 that said that he is the son of everything. Now we have come now to the part that says that he is what? He is a shepherd and overseer of our what? Our soul. So we are talking about pleasing God at all times. Even while we are suffering unjustly. Remember that we have an example in Christ. We have an example that has gone forth already. He showed us the way how we do it. So when people are doing you wrong, shut your mouth. It sounds rough. But isn't that the example? What did Jesus do? Jesus defend himself? Jesus did defend himself, you know? No, it, it, Yes, we we have we have read we we have we have we have, we have in fact we have, we did that already. We did that last week. Was it last week that said we have to give an answer? Be ready to give an answer for what? What we're going to give an answer for? For our hope. Yes, there 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 is context. Again, again, there is context. But when things are going wrong, the Bible is saying, Jesus, what did Jesus do? When he was getting beaten, suffering? What, do I, what, 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 what was going on in the, in, in the New Testament when, it, when, they, when the apostles or whoever was being killed? What did they do? Did they revile? Did they fight back? What did they do? Did they cuss? What, 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 were they, what, what, what were they doing? What, what did Stephen do? They prayed. They prayed because Sister, Sister Sharon, I'm really sorry, I'm going to use the example. You know, Sister Sharon has a, has a situation that we would, we, all of us by, know by now, right? She has some people that are giving her a headache. And she said, these are people that you can't watch, Sister Sharon. Reason with them not going to be here, yeah? side of the story so sometimes so much, I, I, I agree that sometimes we can't, we have, we're going to have an opportunity to talk but sometimes we're going to find some people that we can't reason with because we're, what, what side of the world we are we're on the spiritual side yes sister Fair. Really and truly, oh, to get to that place really and truly requires a lot of faith work mm -hmm. for a Jamaican. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what I'm saying is a Jamaican is a sure. And, and I'm, and yeah, I'm serious. Yes. Because it, it, 
We have too much of Marcus Garvey and Paul Bogle and Nanny and them people there in our blood. Mm -hmm. You know, so so blood if, boy, eh? if if we get for us to get to the place really and truly, mm -hmm. we have to subject the natural man. Yes. In a very real way to the mm -hmm. spiritual man. And I can tell you, brother, when you it 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 it's not easy. No, it's not, it's, it's, it's and not easy. Especially yeah. speaking from the perspective of a Jamaican woman with the indomitable spirit. <laughs> I just want to fight for everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. And injustice is just injustice and needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. It's the hardest thing for you to be silent. But you know, um, yeah, it's going to take a little while. And it's going to take some yes, work. Yes, it's going to take but, a lot but, of work, yes. But, but it, as a, it is possible. Yes. Because yes. our God, and this is what I am appreciating mm -hmm. little by little now, that indeed, when the scripture said Christ could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world, and mm -hmm. what the song says, mm -hmm. he could have called. Um, it really, really requires work. It's a lot to swallow, yep. He, it's, not, it's not just swallow, brother. <laughs> it's remaking of the self yes. in the image of God. That minimizes, deliberately, intentionally, minimizing what the flesh wants to what the spirit ought to be doing. Yes. Brother, it's rough. I need fasting and prayer. All right. So uh, again, this, this, this what, what, what are we talking about? We're, we're talking about uh, being silent or, or, or not fussing or not fighting. What, 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 what are we talking about? In, in what type of action? What type of situation? Hmm? Because we say we don't get deducted by the attack. Yes, when you're suffering. Yes. So we why we are suffering our, our action, you know, there's a song that says the winds and the the winds and the something of be thy will. The, the winds and the wind and the rain? Waves. Okay. Obey thy will. Do what? Peace be still. Peace be still. Whether there is a storm or a tossy, or demons, or men, or whatever it be. No, nothing. When I heard that song, and, and internalize how we should be as Christians, as Sister, Sister Farron is saying, it's a lot to take on. Yes, uh, uh, Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Who, did, who didn't read it? Who have not read? Romans chapter 5, verse... <laughs> uh, Romans chapter 5, and verse number 1. You're going to verse number 13. Uh, Sister Dika, you want to read first? Sister Dika? Yes. Yes, a lot of young people are here too. Oh. Come on now. Yes, uh, Brianna. Therefore, for being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of the Lord, mm -hmm. of God. <laughs> and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, mm -hmm. and patience experience, and experience hope. Mm -hmm. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Mm -hmm. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly, for scarcely... Scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet. Pre adventure. Pre adventure. Is pre adventure? Yes, Pre adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. Mm -hmm. 
But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we who were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath. 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 <laughs> Through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. by whom we have now received the atonement. Mm -hmm. atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, mm -hmm. and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. All right. Thank you very much, Brianna. Uh, thank you for that. A loud, strong yeah. voice. A powerful voice. Thank you. All right. So one thing stood out to me. As she started to read. In verse number three. It says, what does suffering produce? Suffering produce? Patient and patient what? And then and character what? Huh? I, I have a different... Oh, you said hope. I thought you said growth. Hope. Yes, hope. All right? All right. And hope does that what? What does hope do to us? Make us not a? A shame. All right. So God, what God is teaching us is to just have patience with him. It's difficult not easy by our how we used to be as the bible says our former conduct but remember that we're no longer our former ways we have now put on christ and if we put on christ we have to take all of what christ is we can't take some and leave so we can't put on him shirt and leave the pants you have to put on everything the whole armor of god leave nothing and he's saying that we should have patience because he is teaching us a lesson who has, who, 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 who's, who's, who's benefit he's teaching us? For our own. He's teaching us so we can learn to have patience to build our character so that we can have hope. Sister, can you have something to say? Yes. Not only for us to have hope, but when other people know what you've gone through. Yes, yes. Yes, that is, that is true. What, uh, what Sister Kiddo is saying is not only for us only that we are learning these things, but we, we can be an encouragement to those if, if, if people know what we're going through. All right? Sometimes we can, we can always relate to whether it is that somebody who died that was suffering while in their illness, we can say, boy, that person had some real faith. And when somebody's going through a difficult time and they, you, you, you just see them persevere, it gives you a little more strength and you, you feel revitalized. Like you, you, you can't give, it, give up this. Remember what we said last week? The Bible says in Hebrews that if we have so much of what? Great of a cloud of witnesses, that's why we go what? We go forward. We don't give up. Sister Sharon. <laughs> mm. Right, right. You know? And then I said, but no, God is my protector. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. I am going to Bible class. Right? Because no mm. weapon that form against us shall prosper. Amen. 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 All right, I, I, and I will, I will leave uh, Romans chapter 6. So you're going to read from verse 1. Somebody has time now. Who is this next young person? Time next young person, Annabelle. 
All right, so as I said before, Sister Sharon is dealing with something. I hear Sister Sharon just said a while ago. What did you Sister Sharon said? We were listening. Uh, so she's saying that she's dealing with something and she was being threatened. And so she said that what she would do. She, she initially, and, and I've spoken to some people, especially living down that side, when things are heated up and stuff, and they, they don't feel like to do, come out to, to worship. And when you come out is when it start get hot. And I've seen some people, and I said to myself, look at, look at Sister, Sister Richards is not here uh, this evening. But Sister Richards is, is one of them. She would say, when the shots start fire, she step foot, the shots start fire, and she said, brother, I'm telling you, she said, devil, now nah, stop me, you know. And she would walk, come out and take her taxi and reach. That, that, it, it, it shows us. Sometimes we read about it, but when we see it around us, it, 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 it resonates differently. It have a bit more oomph, if you may. Because we're seeing what is going on around us and persons are just thriving in spite of what is going on. All right? Yeah, Brother uh, Gil. Yeah, uh, just the passage I was just read. Yes. Uh, my translation says glory in tribulation. You know, most times when we have success, uh, when things go in for us, we're on an eye. Yep. We feel good and we give praises and we just tell everybody about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the Bible is actually telling us when we're going through tribulation, that's the same attitude we should have. Yes. Because we know why we're going through it and we know that God is not going to put us into something that we can't overcome. Mm -hmm. And even if we can't overcome it, he's there to take us through it. Yes. And so we should be glorifying God. We should be having this spirit about us even when tribulation come it shouldn't be not be dampening in our spirit yes and cause us to feel down we should mm -hmm. be just on top of the world just the same yes and so when you look at paul and silas when they were beaten and so in the inner part of the jail they continue singing mm -hmm. they continue praising and i keep saying over and over i don't know if i would have had the strength after being beaten <laughs> to be singing in a dark cave with rats running around me and mm -hmm. stuff like that but that's when you find these guys singing and God say, you know what? I'm going to demonstrate my power through what you have done. Mm -hmm. So sometimes God don't demonstrate his power through us because we are not glorying him and we're not glorying our tribulation. We allow it to cast us down so he can use us mm -hmm. as an example to the world. Mm -hmm. All right, you know, Sister, Sister Cassandra said something earlier as well. Uh, she said, sometimes we are so focused on our jobs and the things that we want to achieve. And we forget that when we, when, 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 we, when we leave this earth, all we will have is God. All, and all, everything else, will, it will not mean nothing more. If you think about the rich man, all, he had everything. And he, he did not, when he, when, when he realized where he was, what did he do? He didn't say, boy, God, I'm go back on my queen size bed or my king size bed. God, boy, I'll go back in on my chariot. He did, he, what, he, he did not say, I want to sit around my big table to eat and drop some more crumbs. He didn't say that, you know, all of that meant nothing to him. That when he died and he realized the state that he was in, he counted all of that last already. He come like, say, my Peter all over again. He counted all of that nothing. What, what he wanted now to do is to do what? He, all of a sudden he wanted to be evangelistic. He wanted to now send people to go preach. He didn't care. We have the opportunity, and what we're being taught throughout all of these passages, we have the opportunity to do good right now. Do it so that when we die, we have something to gain and not lose. All right? Sister, Sister Annabelle? Romans chapter 6, verse number 1. We're going to verse number 14. What shall we say then? Shall we, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Am I, am I at the right scripture? God forbid, how shall we that are dead in sin, hold on, dead in sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us are 
So, so many of us, as we're baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by a baptism into death, that like Christ we rise, we raise up from, we raise up from dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we also shall walk in the newness of life. We're going to verse number uh, 14. 14. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Mm -hmm. Knowing this, that, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin may be destroyed, that, that hence, henceforth we should not serve, serve sin, for that his death is freed from sin. Mm -hmm. Now if we be dead in Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ shall raise from the dead, that death no more death has, death hath no more domain, domain over him. For in that we, he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Mm -hmm. Likewise reckon ye also yourself to be dead, indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our God. Let not sin therefore reign in our mortal body, that ye shall obey it in the loss thereof. Neither ye yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, that yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members are instruments of righteousness unto God. 14 and last, for sin shall not be dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. All right, thank you very much. All right, so anybody want to take out this verse first before I say anything? Anybody? A lot was said. Uh, so two things it's talking about. It's talking about Jesus Christ. So he said that because of what Jesus Christ has done for us, if we are dead in Christ, just as how he was, uh, he died, he was resurrected, and we are, we are dead in our uh, old self through baptism, and we raise up again as a new man. If we, if we, if we die in that state, we will, we will do what? Reap our rewards when? Just as he did raise as a new creature. At the end of time, we also will do what? Raise up. Right? And it said that because of what Jesus did, he mastered what? He mastered, yes, we're going to close. He mastered death and he mastered what? Hmm? He mastered death because he was raised. What was the second thing? Sin, yes, yes. So he said, because he said that because we're living the life that Jesus wants us to live, then we would have already mastered what. So we should not. He said, he said that in the last passage. Was it that he said? Last passage. Last verse. So sin, hmm? sin, sin no longer shall have. Wait, what, what verse is that? Is it 20, 14? Is it, is it 14? 8, 8, 12, 14. Romans chapter 6 and verse 14. All right, thank you. Yes. For sin shall no longer be your, be your what? Our master. Because you are no longer under the law, but under grace. So because Christ already did those things for us, we are now his beings. We are new creatures. We are Christians. Now we no longer live to sin. Because he said, you know, as shall we continue to live in sin just because we have grace? Certainly 
not. Because we're going, remember the Bible tells us, you know, we're going to reap what we sow. So if you sow unto the body, you will reap unto the what? Death. But if you sow unto the spirit, you will reap what? Life. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, any other question or comment before as we close? Yes, sister Winsome. We do have control. Sorry, we have control over sinning. Yes. We, yes. It is sinning is a matter of choice. Yes. As a Christian, as a Christian, we have the Holy Spirit who helps us if we feed Him. If we feed Him mm -hmm. to resist sin. Yes. So when we fall into sin. When we, it's, it's us, we, we chose sin. Mm -hmm. Because it says like in verse 12, therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal, in your body. mortal body. Yes. That you should obey it in its loss. Mm -hmm. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. To sin, right. But present yourself to God as being alive from the dead and your yes. members as instruments of righteousness. Mm -hmm. so, so as a Christian... Um, because it is speaking to Christians. Yes. I should not make myself available to sin. Yes. I should yes. put myself in a place where I will sin. Yes. I should not give occasion to sin. To sin. Yes. Because that is not the power mm -hmm. that is now resting in me. Yes. So I have a responsibility. Um, to cut out the, 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 the take away the power that sin once had over me. Yes. Because yes, I am still dwelling in the physical flesh, but the one who now rules my life is the giver of life, Jesus Christ himself. Yes. So I must now yield myself to come into Bible class. I must now yield myself to talking to others about becoming Christians. Mm -hmm. I must now use my members. My mouth must now be singing praise to God and telling my friends what I did in order to become a Christian. Yes. So I, and I must not put myself at a party <laughs> where I might end up drink and drunk and then have sex and amen, then all kind of, I must not yield myself amen. to those kinds of things. Yes. So I must give my I must be careful what I listen to. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to change my music. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to change the kind of things I enjoy watching on TV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I no mm -hmm. longer want to yield my members to sin. Yes. Yeah? Yes. So really and truly, when we get into sin, and a sinful person speaking as well, so I'm not speaking like I do That's have true. sin. That's yeah, true. but yes. for us to understand that we have to practice righteousness mm -hmm. in order to get to this place. Yes. That God desires us to be. Yes, thank you. Thank you with that. Any anything else? Uh yes, sister Kidu. Gonna ask Brother Haya to close us in prayer after this, the song. There are persons who are say addicted to cocaine or some and they think that they can never overcome it. This is a passage of hope, regardless of what is your master. Yes. Jesus can replace that. Amen. And we must bear that message to people. Yes. That don't think that you have to be an alcoholic. You don't have to be a womanizer or whatever. Yes, either, yes. Right? Because Jesus has made provision to mm -hmm. clear that. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, that's so true. Uh, you know, the Bible says that the devil uses what? What the devil uses? Our own loss. And desires. So if we know our loss and our desires, as Sister uh, Ferran said, we should stay away from certain things and certain places, right? Because the devil is going to use those things to get at, at us. All right, so we're going to ask Brother Hyatt to lead us in a word of prayer after the singing of this next song, and then we're closed.
Soon and very soon we are going to see the King. Hallelujah. Soon and very soon we are going to see the King. Oh yes, well soon and very soon we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we are going to see the king because no more crying there. We are going to see the king sing again now, no more crying there. We are going to see the king, oh yes, no more crying there. We are going to see the king sing now, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we are going to see the king no more, no more dying there. We are going to see the king, hallelujah, no more dying there. We are going to see the king one more time, no more dying there. We are going to see the king, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we are going to see the King. Good night, Virgin. Our? Let us go to God in prayer. Father in heaven, you are king of all kings. You are Lord of all lords. You are the one true and living God. You are the great I am. Tonight, as we come before you another time, Lord, we are giving you thanks and we are praising you. Father, we thank you for life. We thank you, Lord, for health. We thank you for giving us strength. We thank you, Lord, for providing the necessities, the necessities, necessities of life of each day, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the tests that we have to go through on a daily basis, knowing that Heavenly Father, we have to be test, tested, we have to be tried to become out as pure gold. Father, it is not easy for some of us, but Lord, we know that you are with us going through our tests and all our troubles and our trials. We thank you, Lord, for taking us through today. We thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon us for today. We thank you for the test too for today, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, for placing it in our heart, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that dwells within us, that encourages us, mighty God, that when we are going through difficult times, we can still go through knowing that you are there with us, taking us through. Father, we want to give you thanks, Lord, for our Bible class. We thank you, Lord, for Brother Tito, who presented the, the lessons, and for each and every one of us that participated. Father, help us to apply it to our lives. Help us, Heavenly Father, when we are going through challenges and difficult times. We have to give thanks still, Lord, because in doing so, Heavenly Father, we have our reward in heaven. Father, at this time, we just want to present some of our members before you in a special way. Especially Sister Sharon at this time, McLeod. You know the situation uh, around her premises with her neighbors, with her tenants rather. So Lord, we present them before you, knowing that we know who you are. We know who you are, mighty God. So we present those tenant before you. And we ask, Heavenly Father, that you give them that change of heart, of mercy upon them, Lord. Because 
you don't like when per persons trouble your people. So Lord, we place them at your feet tonight. We ask you to have mercy upon them, Lord. We ask you to forgive them for they do not what they are doing. Father, at this time we ask your blessings on Sister Sharon and our son and uh, on the residents too, Heavenly Father. We place the situation before you, we giving you thanks, Lord, for working out that situation. Lord, we believe and we know, mighty God, that you will work out that situation, Heavenly Father. And Sister Sharon will be a living testimony. Father, we thank you for working it out. Heavenly Father, we place Sister Wisdom for her before you at this time. And Lord, she has an issue at her workplace, Heavenly Father. Lord, promotion comes only from you. And if that position is for your daughter, no one else can get that position. So Heavenly Father, we present the case before you. We know that you are a just God. And you, Lord, will deliver. So we thank you too, Lord, for working the situation for her. We place the rest of our family members before you at this time. We ask your blessings on them. Our son, our sons, one in um, Tijani, which is overseas, we ask your blessings on him. Protect, preserve, and keep him, Heavenly Father. Preserve him, mighty God. Also, John Pierre too, Lord, we ask your blessings on him. Be with him, Brother Ferron too, Heavenly Father, at this time. Strengthen him, Heavenly Father. Give him the strength that he needs, him, mighty God. And help him, Lord, to remain steadfast. Help them all, Lord, to remain steadfast. Abounding in your words, Heavenly Father. And staying connected to you. Likewise for us, the rest of us, Heavenly Father. We ask that you help us, Lord, to stay connected to you. Help us, Heavenly Father, to build up our treasures in heaven. Help us, Heavenly Father, not to, to glorify and worship the things that you blessed us with, but in, instead, Lord, to worship and glorify you, the blesser and the giver of all things. Heavenly Father, we just ask that you continue to be with all of us at this time. Those who are sick, we just present them before you. We don't even know, but you know who's who are sick, Heavenly Father. So who are who, those who are sick, we present them before you tonight. The shutting members too, we present all before you at this time. Those who are grieving, loss of loved one, mourning, Heavenly Father, we present them all before you too, Lord. We ask that you be with them all, Heavenly Father. And the sick, you restore them to health with your will, Heavenly Father. Those who are mourning, help us, Lord, to mourn with them too, Lord, and give them encouraging words too, Lord. We thank you for your words, which is life, which is meat and food for the soul. We help us, Lord, to stay attuned and stay connected and stay in, in your words, Heavenly Father, that you might grow spiritually and be matured. Father, we place our youngsters before you at this time. We ask your blessings on them, especially those who are newly converted at this time, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask that you strengthen them and help us to encourage them, Lord, that they will read your words and start to grow, to get the milk from your words, Heavenly Father, and start to grow and uh, develop and mature, Heavenly Father. Then they start to eat the good, the strong, good food, which is your word. Father, be with all of our youngsters, as I said before, Lord. Continue to strengthen them and help them, Heavenly Father, that they will remain faithful to the end. And for those of us who have not given our life to you yet in as yet as Heavenly Father, we ask that you give them a change of heart, a change of thought, that they, Lord, will consider giving their lives to you before time is no more. Father, as we are about to depart, we ask you your blessings. You ask that you grant us your traveling journeys, Heavenly Father, that we will reach home safely, Heavenly Father, and that we will have a good night's rest. We just want to thank you, Lord, again, Lord, for today. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity granted unto us, your people, that we, were, we, we could come here and to listen and to participate in the Bible study. Lord, uh, we thank you, Lord. We give you glory, we honor, and praise. And we say thanks in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 
Uh, thank you, Brother Hyatt. As you're about to close, uh, just quickly, this Friday at 6 p.m. will be our uh, end of month or last Friday social.